Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, hello! My name is Zed the Ghoul Friend, and I have stolen Learn the Conjurer's camera again. <laughs> Please don't tell her. Anyway, you might also remember my dear, dear assistant and bone friend, Bones! Say hi, Bones! Oh, it's just... You're so sweet. Anyway, we decided to go on ahead and continue our segment called Why Are You Afraid? Where we discuss the science behind why people are fearful of, well, almost anything. Now, this fear was submitted by YouTuber as well as awesome digital artist, Kataboo. She decided to go on ahead and comment that her fear was butterflies and mobs. And with it being spring and summertime, and with all the moths and butterflies fluttering about, we thought, this is perfect! And by we, I mean mostly me, and I, I did ask Bones' his opinion. Don't I always ask your opinion, Bones? And don't you forget it. So thank you, Kataboo, for submitting your fear. We can't wait to dive into it. Are you afraid of butterflies or moths? There is a legitimate fear of butterflies and moths out there. Our research shows that the fear of butterflies and moths is called <laughs> Lepidopterophobia. Now because that is quite a tongue twister, I'm just gonna refer to all of this as scary butterfly syndrome. Yeah, that sounds scientific. Now, there's another one called metaphobia, or the fear of moths alone, and it's closely related to this phobia. Those who suffer genuinely call themselves metaphobes. Metaphobe. That sounds like a great supervillain name. <gasps> Bones! Do you want to be my sidekick if I become an evil supervillain? Oh, I, I, I'm sorry, I forgot that you have Bridge Club on Wednesdays. That, yeah, that, that... That, that takes some serious time. While the fear of spiders, or arachnophobia, is the most common insect fear people encounter, fear of butterflies and moths is also a fairly common phobia, if you could believe that. While many people see butterflies as cute and harmless creatures, some people are afraid of how they look. Even actress Nicole Kidman claims to have the fear. Now, how did this fear of butterflies originate? Many people develop phobias from single or repeated events where they were in an environment that was unfamiliar or startled by an unpredictable or uncontrolled interaction with a butterfly or a moth. Now others associate butterfly and moth behavior with being attacked or overcome by insects so that their fear is less about being hurt but more so being unable to control or escape that kind of environment. So of course there's gonna be a fear of fluttering report that they're afraid of the creature's constant fluttering. Some fear the sensation of a fluttering butterfly flying into their face or brushing up against their arms. The lack of predictability of movement is associated with this fear in that people don't know whether the butterfly or the moth will land on them or where on their body it will touch. You taking all this down, Bones? Good. Fluttering's one thing, but what about the fear of swarming? Both butterflies and moths are social creatures, and they often travel in groups. Some people who fear them are less afraid of a single butterfly or moth than they are a large group. Swarming, in which many butterflies or moths fly in close formation, may be a particular trigger. People whose fears is specifically of swarming are often afraid, even when the insects are at rest, as they often rest in groups. So how would you begin to overcome a butterfly phobia? Well, no matter what the origin, there are proven ways to help people with the scary, spooky butterfly syndrome. You ready, Bones? This is serious. It involves you facing your fear. Research into the method called MEE, or mere exposure effect, has shown that exposure to the object that you fear in a controlled and intentional environment is a good way to help neutralize the phobia. While the fear may never go away completely, deliberately interacting with or exposing yourself to butterflies, for example, at a zoo where there are butterfly and moth exhibits, or going to a garden, may be a good way to face your fear. 
And because it's summertime, and everybody has been hopefully safe, you may be able to venture outside to see something. No, no, phones, we're not going outside. No, we're not. We're busy filming. A sense of lack of control may be a contributor to the anxiety that results from the phobia. And by intentionally interacting with them, you assume greater control, and this may alleviate some of your fear. Some people join butterfly conservation projects, which is always good for the planet. Others try immersion therapy. Others find solace in creating art with their feared subjects. Dark. Hey, Bones, how would you feel if someone just took a bunch of bones and displayed them on a wall for people to see and look at? Oh, I, 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 oh, well, I'm sorry. I, I, for, I forgot. Well, I know, I know that, but you know I don't know social cues. Whatever you try, never allow your phobia to keep you from socializing or enjoying time with friends and family. If you find your phobia is leading to this, get the help you need and enlist your community of support to come along for the ride. Safely, of course. Well, ghosts and ghoulies, that's it for us. If you like this video, please feel free to go ahead and comment down below and tell us what you thought. And don't forget to submit your fears so that we can cover it next time. Again, a special thanks to Kataboo. Please go check out her channel. Her art is beautiful and she talks a lot of really wonderful and relevant cultural topics. And please consider subscribing for more spooky fun content. Especially if you could just maybe say that you really like this and uh, learn will let it keep happening. I, I, I stole her camera again. Don't tell her. That's it for us. So remember the rules of conjuring. Never play alone. Never play in a graveyard. And Bones, take it away! <laughs> Always good, Bones.